Okay, welcome to our STEAM Club meeting. And today we are going to make a very fun pinwheel tower card. And for those of you who were on the summer 2021 Creative Eight retreat yesterday, you know about pinwheel tower cards. And I was part of that retreat yesterday and I actually laughed when I saw the video that was shown that Sharon Armstrong had because I knew that I was planning on showing you how to do a pinwheel tower card today. But I am going to show you how to make this card. You can see that it, when you're looking straight on, this is what it looks like. And then it's called a pinwheel tower card because when you place it to scan, you have a pinwheel. And then you also have this tower or chimney or whatever you want to call it in the center that allows you to have some really good support to hold it up. This is a very fun design because it fits perfectly into an A2 envelope so you can mail it without a problem. And I'm going to show you two different ways to make this in an A2 design. The first one that I just pulled out is with a cardstock base. And then the second one that I'm showing now is with a designer series paper base. Exactly the same in terms of the way that everything is made, but we'll talk through a couple of the differences as we go on. And then I will give you a sneak peek into another size that I'm going to show you how to make. And this is one that will fit into an A10 envelope. This is the size of a slimline card. So this will go into an A10 envelope and you can mail that without a problem as well. So very, very, very simple to do. It's very cool because it's just a very nice piece that people can look at and it's almost a, a display piece that you can, you can do. But let me not talk, let me actually show you. So I am going to start by recreating something that looks similar to this card. And there are a couple of pieces that you will need in order to make the A2 size card for the pinwheel tower card. We need four pieces of cardstock. One of those is four and a quarter by five and three quarters. And I'm using Daffodil Delight. And then there are three other pieces. They're all the same color cardstock. You could actually use different colors of cardstock if it's something that you wanted to do. But for the first one or two that you make, you may want to just stick with the same color cardstock. And these are measured at four and a quarter by two and three quarters. And there are three of those, and they are the exact same size. So four and a quarter by two and three quarters. And what we're going to do is we are going to start with the four and a quarter by five and three quarters, and we're going to score that. And this is where the way that I make these tower cards is different than the way that Sharon Armstrong showed on her video yesterday. And I'll explain a little bit more once we get done. We're going to make four score lines. And each of them is going to be three quarters of an inch from one another. So we're going to start at three quarters and we're going to do a score. And I put my paper in so that I have the five and, the, and three quarters as the length. And that's the edge that I'm scoring on. So three quarters. And then if we add three quarters to three quarters, we get to one and a half. We're going to add another three quarter measurement to that. That brings it to two and a quarter. And then the last one that we're going to do is at 
three inches. So four score lines. And I'm just gonna make sure I've got a nice score in there. And each of them is equal distance apart. I'm gonna take that out of my scoring board. And then I am going to fold and burnish. And I'm going to be rolling these all up. So this is a valley fold, the way that I'm holding the paper. And you do want to do a nice burnish on this edge because this is what is going to form the center of your pinwheel card. So just give it a nice little burnish. And go all the way to the fourth one. And just do that. So you can see that this piece is the one that we're going to use to build that tower or the, the foundation, the chimney, whatever you want to call it. But that's going to be really the, the spoke that we're going to use to attach the other pieces. And we're going to go ahead and adhere that together. And I'm going to use Tombow. When you adhere this, you want to put a little bit of glue toward each of the ends. You don't want to get it super close to the end to have it ooze out. And you definitely want to make sure you have a good bit of glue just to, make, to have a nice adhesion. And you don't go overboard with this because you don't want it oozing out. I know that's a real technical term. And then what I'm gonna do is I am literally gonna bring that piece down and I'm just gonna hold it. I'm trying to hold it as close to square as I can and just let that kind of dry. And make sure that this is holding together well. This is just the beginning point that we're gonna use. Now, let me talk a little bit about different ways that people make these pinwheel cards. And one of the differences is the way that people make the actual tower. Some folks will take a separate piece of paper. And in this case, for the size that we made, they might use something like three and a quarter inches in width, four and a half inches high, but three and a quarter inches. And what they would do is again, do the, the score lines at three quarters, one and a half, two and a quarter and three, and then make the tower out of that one piece of paper and add the other spokes to the tower. You're gonna see what I mean in just a minute. I like this. It's just, in my opinion, just a little bit more firm and it's also a little bit easier to do. When you're doing these tower cards occasionally, then that middle, you want to try and get that to be flat. So you want to make sure that there's one side at least that is really going to lie nice and flat. And that will become more important as we go through. The next thing that I'm going to do, I like to do some decorating on the panels before I attach everything. And I find that when I decorate the panels first, I have a better chance of getting things centered because once the pieces are attached, it gets a little difficult to reach in and make things nice and centered. So what I'm going to do is on each of the three panels, I am going to attach some designer series paper. And I have purposely gone through and made sure that the pieces that I'm going to use are going to look nice next to each other. And let me tell you what I'm talking about. So I have four panels of designer series paper and each of these panels is cut to four inches high by two and a half inches wide. So it's just a quarter of an inch less in height and width than the actual cardstock. And I'm using the hand pen designer series paper, which I think is 
simply gorgeous. And I picked two different patterns that I'm going to use. This looks like an extra piece, but it's not. It will end up going on that part of what I just made for my face. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am literally just going to quickly glue these in place. And this is where, just like many, many card designs that we make, you have infinite options in terms of the colors that you use, the color combinations. Um, you're gonna see as you make these that you will find different designs, different stamps, different embellishments that you will want to use and come up with a lot of really pretty cards that will showcase well in here. What you may also want to do, and this was something that was talked about on Creative 8 yesterday and also um, some examples were shown, is since you're going to have multiple panels, you can tell a story. You can have multiple sentiments that you put in or sentiments and designs that don't limit you to one or two things that you want to say. Maybe you have, you know, congratulations, way to go. Um, you did it. And off to the next step or something, you know, so you can just have a lot of different different sentiments and you can put one on each of the, the panels. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to put the fourth one on the panel that I've already created with my foundation with that tower that I made. This is also a pretty quick design. It doesn't take a lot of time to do after you've chosen the colors that you want to use and the different um, colors that you might want to put together. So you can see I have two of this design and I have two of the others. Well, what I'm going to do is when I put these panels on, I'm going to alternate the paper. Let me bring back the example. You can see here that on this wing, I have the one that has the purple flowers. Then I go to one that has a little bit more in pink and, and oranges. Then I come back to the purple, then I go back to the oranges. So I am going to do kind of the same thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to just move our tower 90 degrees and attach one of the panels. And when you do this, this is very important. Put the glue on the tower. Don't put the glue on the panel because if you happen to get glue over where you have that score line and you put this down, you're gonna have some problems getting this open. So when you put these on, just put some glue again, make sure you do top and bottom. Just gonna have it kind of hang together a little bit better. Put your glue on. And the other thing to do is make sure you have the orientation the way you want it. This is vertical, this is vertical, and I'm gonna go ahead and put those together. Now, your designer series paper or whatever it is that you have in the middle may not have a vertical and a horizontal. That's fine. You can do what you like. Just give it a second. And then, like I've suggested, just make sure that you can fold this down. I want to make sure that I have at least one side that is going to really do a nice job of folding. That's going to help us when we get to the point of putting everything in the envelope. I'm moving this 90 degrees and I'm doing the exact same thing. So I know this is not the most exciting thing to watch, but hopefully as I am doing this, you are as well. And I also made sure that when I laid out my panels, 
I laid them out before I started blowing because if I get distracted or start daydreaming or whatever, I don't have to think. I don't have to think that's a good thing. And again, I'm just going to make sure that I can move that as best as I can. And that it's still doing really nicely when we're removing everything around. It's much easier to do this now than to try and do it later. The last panel, you're going to have to hold up what you've done to this point. It's not going to lay flat incredibly well. That's all right. I'm just putting some glue in there, taking that last panel, again, making sure that it's vertical. I add that in. And I should have said this before, but I'm holding this so that I've got my fingers top and bottom. And that way I can make sure that it's nice and square on the top and the bottom as well. I'm just getting that a little bit. And I'm going to do the full folding again, just to make sure things are looking okay. So now I've got a really nice base. Everything looks like it's, it's working well. I'm able to fold it flat, at least in one direction, and I'm happy. All right, let's look at the example card. And you can see a couple of things that are missing, or at least from the example to the one that I'm making right now. So this is where you've got a ton, ton, ton of options. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of decorating. And I purposely went through and picked out some colors of designer series paper that I thought when you look side to side, because you're going to see these two pieces when it's open, that I thought the colors worked well together. So I've got two purples that I'll be adding. And then if I move it over to the, this piece, I'm going to use a green. Before I attach these though, I'm going to just do a little bit more. I'm just going to add a stripe here. And those are just a, a couple pieces. You don't need to do this. Um, you, can, you can do whatever you would like. But these pieces that I cut are four inches high and one and three quarter inches wide. And what I want to do before I put I don't want to just glue this down and then glue the yellow piece on the top. I'm actually going to glue my two side panels together first. And I'll tell you why. If any of the little pieces of yellow happen to be a little bit longer or taller, I have the opportunity to just cut them off a little bit and make sure they're the same height before I put them on the purple. And that's me, you know, it's, it's definitely not something that you have to do, but if you want to make it look kind of even, then you can do that. And even this doesn't take very long. It's just a really quick, add those little pieces of paper. You don't have to do this and you can decorate it however you want to. I just think adding a little, sort of piece of color. These are four inches by half an inch. They're nothing mystical or magical. And then I can go back in and I can put these in the center. And this one, you definitely, you know, you're gonna kind of wing it a little bit when you, when you put that on and put it in the center because the card is together, but we're gonna give it in the center as best as we can. So I'm just going to put that in the middle and looking at it vertically and horizontally. Tombo. And then I'm going to flip this all the way over to the other side and add in my other little purple one. And just add that on. Um, there are a lot of these that are shown out on Pinterest and other areas on the internet. And there are some really cool things that people do to decorate these cards. So now we have two sides complete. 
And then just going to come back in and then finish these other two pieces off really quickly. And I chose to use the yellow again, but to put that on a piece of green designer series paper this time. And the orientation looks okay on that. It's just making sure that the design was going straight up. This one I am going to cut just a little bit because it is peeking off the top just a tad. So this one I will trim before I put it on the card. And then I'm going to do this. Hopefully this video is not freezing as it is being recorded. We had a nasty, nasty storm that came in earlier today. And it was really interesting. I was in here in the craft room working and um, there was a lightning strike or something that hit really close by. And I had LED lights in the overhead light that is in this room. And it went out. So my husband and I went from room to room to room. And the reason I'm bringing this up is we didn't know this, but apparently if you have LED lights on during a storm and there is a lightning strike or something close by, LED lights can blow if they're on. And that's what happened. All five of the lights that were in the light picture in this room were dead. And every other LED light that was on in the house is also dead. But fluorescent lights, incandescent lights, or anything else, incandescent lights, they're fine. So just words to words, kind of weird. Anyway, all is good. All right, so we have our panels that are now nicely decorated as well. So we have essentially all eight sides that are decorated. And it's just a really pretty little card to have. So the last things that I did, and this is where you have just tons of options to decorate or not decorate or figure out exactly how you want to finish off your card. I wanted to make these cards kind of simple. I think that at least for me, the designer series paper is, is busy enough and really shows off the, the background. But I did want to make a happy birthday card. So I, I used happy birthday and then hope this card makes you smile. And for the card that I just put together, I'm going to add the same sentiments. And what I did for these is, as you can see, I stamped on designer series paper. And then behind this piece, and these were cut out with now one of my absolute favorite new die sets. This is scalloped contours dies. These things are awesome. I used the smallest and the next to smallest and made these two sentiments. And then here's what I suggest when you figure out where you want to put your sentiment. Test your card, put it flat, and literally kind of figure out what side lays down the best. And when you figure out which one it is, and it's this one for me, that's going to be where I'm going to put my first sentiment, the one that I want somebody to see when they first see the card, because this is how I'm going to put the card into the envelope. And that way, it has just a little bit more of a pop. This is the first thing I want the person to see. I want to see them to see happy birthday. And then on the next panel, I'm going to put my other stamp. And it, you will find inevitably that there is one side that is going to lay flatter than another. And it's just the way that 
it all comes together. It's nothing that you did wrong. It's just the way that it, it works. And then on the next one is where I'm going to put this, hope this card makes you smile. And these two stamps are from the um, host celebration stamp set in your words. And this is one of the freebies that demonstrators were able to purchase actually. And that's how I got mine. Or if you host a um, party that has at least $300 or if you have a $300 order. And if in our next group order, we reach the $300 threshold, I will get one of these and it will be a challenge prize as well. So this is a really cool set. There are some really, really nice sentiments. And I am just going to add that second sentiment onto this panel. And I may come back afterwards and do a little bit of blingy blingy stuff, but I am going to say that that's good enough for right now. So that's how you would make a pinwheel tower card using cardstock. One thing I will say is with all these layers of cardstock, this card is a little bulky. This is a regular A2 envelope. This is one of Stampin' Up's envelopes. It fits. It does have a little bit of bulk up at the top. So another way that you can make this card and have it be a little less bulky is if you use designer series paper. And I'm gonna show you the difference in this one. If I literally get that same envelope and put the card into the envelope, this is the designer series paper one. You can see that that one lays flatter. There is not the bulk. And another way that you can make a card a little bit less bulky is if you didn't want to use the larger or wider piece of cardstock to make your tower, you can cut a piece of about three and a quarter out of designer series paper. You are still going to have multiple layers of cardstock, but it's going to be a little bit less thick. I like the ones that are made completely out of designer series paper. I really think they have just a lot of designs going on. I made this one using the hand pen as well. And it is the exact, exact same thing. So I'm just going to start one. I'm not going to finish it, but I'm going to show you that you can make the exact same kind of card using designer series paper, just like I did with the cardstock. And what you would need to do that is you're going to need, again, four pieces of designer series paper. This is the equivalent of what I use with the cardstock. This is four and a quarter by five and three quarters. And if I wanted to make the piece into the tower card, I would do the exact same thing. I'm going to come in here and just refreshing your memory. We're going to score at three and a quarter. You need to be a little more gentle when you're scoring on designer series paper because if you put a lot of pressure, you can tear it. You're going to go to one and a half. You're going to go to two and three quarters, and you're going to go to three. So again, we have the exact same four score lines. We're going to do the exact same thing. I'm not going to build this one. I'm just going to talk you through it because it would be very redundant for me to, to do this. And you're going to build your tower just like you did, and you would actually adhere that together. Now, when you do this, what's kind of cool is if you're doing this out of designer series paper, you already have two patterns that you're working with. 
So the fun part is you can pick for your three pieces, you can pick patterns. This is the same one that work together as you're going around your pinwheel. So I've got this really pretty peach and I wanna have a piece that has the peach because on the, the one that's gonna be opposite, I wanna have that peach. Well, I've got this really pretty blue. So I'm gonna put my blue right here. And then if I come over to the next panel, I've got a really pretty orange. That's where I'm gonna put my peach. And then the next one will have the two blues. So it's really fun to go through and find designer series paper that works together. And you'll find that if you look at a package of paper, what I suggest is to, on one side, use kind of a plain design, you know, nothing that's super busy. So that's why I chose these two. I wanted to have two kind of plain pieces. And then on the other side, I knew that these two were gonna be a little bit busier. And that's how I also chose these. So I've got a green working with this flower powder. On the opposite side of those flowers, I've got a really nice polka dot that works really well with the flower pattern here. Then I'm back to my green and the same flowers. And then I'm back to my polka dots and the same flowers. So when you do this, just make sure that you're choosing some colors that work together really well. And if you want, you can add a stripe of designer series paper on these as well. The one thing that you may wanna consider here, and let's just bring this card back in. The one on the right is the one that we made with the cardstock. That panel is shorter. It is a quarter of an inch shorter. And on this, I'm just using the designer series paper. It's one thickness. So this is why it's gonna be a lot thinner when you put that into your card. And again, I chose the, the side that's going to lay flat when I did my happy birthday and then hope this card makes me smile. So I am not going to bore you to tears and show you how to put the designer series paper one together. I will put that together later, the one that I just started, and I'll post that when I post the video. But um, that's how you do an A2 card. So let me show you what I did to figure out how to make the card that fits into the slimline envelope. And I want you to, we're gonna do math for a minute. Don't, don't close your mind because this is, I'm gonna show you and tell you how you can make these any size you want to fit any size envelope that you want. So let's think about this for two seconds. And this is, this is important. This is the size that fits into an A2 card or an A2 envelope. An A2 card is four and a quarter by five and a half. That's what this ends up being. If I get out my ruler and I show you that it's four and a quarter by five and a half, um, you would see that that's what it is. And I have my ruler out and I'm gonna find it, here it is. So this, as we know, is four and a quarter high. And then if I put it against the ruler, it's five and a half inches long. So I started thinking, okay, I can do math. So how is it that that's how that ended up to be that size? Well, the panels that we cut to do this are two and three quarter inches wide. This is four and a half a quarter inches high. So that's, that's a given. I know how high it's gonna be. But how did whoever came up with this, and they're brilliant by the way, figure out that the panel needs to be two and three quarter inches wide. Well, what's half of five and a half? It's two and three quarters. So whatever length you want your card to be, the panel is going to be half that size. 
pretty easy, right? Okay. Well, that's for the way I do it for three of the panels, the three that we added on. It's not for the one that has the tower. So here's an example. This is four and a quarter inches high. Right here is two and three quarters. Once we do all of this scoring and folding, this piece right here is also two and three quarters long. Hmm. Interesting. So if I started out with something that's five and three quarters and I need four score lines, then I know that I need to take up three inches. This will make better sense in a minute. Give me a second to get my tower piece. So I thought, all right, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure out how to make a pinwheel card that will fit into an A10 envelope. And I'm going to do the math, and I'm going to make sure that it works. And I always do a prototype. So I always use white cardstock. And I'll see if I can find that in just a minute. This envelope is nine inches wide. Yeah, nine inches wide. Nine and a quarter, sorry, nine and a quarter inches wide. And it is just a teeny bit over four inches in height. So I want my card, when it's folded up like this, to be four inches high and nine inches wide. How do I do that? Well, I know that I need a four inch height. And I know that if it's nine inches wide, that each of my pieces is going to be four and a half inches long because that's half of nine inches. And then I need to figure out how I'm going to do my little tower piece. So here's what I did. Let me cut to the chase here because I have cut out another group of paper to show you how to make this. I started with a piece of designer series paper that is eight and a half inches long. I knew that I wanted the panel to be four and a half inches wide because I want my entire card to be nine inches long. So I'm gonna just take it in half. And I decided for this kind of card that I wanted the tower to have one inch on each side. Well, I'm gonna score four times. So that means four inches. So if I'm going to do four inches in the tower, I need to add four more inches onto my main piece. Four and a half inches long plus four more inches for the tower means that I'm going to make this eight and a half inches long. And it works. So on this one, I have chosen that the width of each of those sides for my little tower is going to be an inch. I just thought it would look a little more substantial on a card that is this wide to have a tower that would be a little bit wider than the one I used for the A2 card. So when I glue that together, that is the start of my swimline card. And again, it is eight and a half inches long, four inches high, and then I scored at one, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to adhere that together, and that is going to be the start of my card. And when I did that, and that's exactly what I did for this card, I did the exact same thing that we've done on the 
other cards. I glued this together. And then I have separate panels. And these panels are four inches high. That's how high my card is going to be by four and a half inches long. And I'm going to adhere that on that side of the tower. And I'm going to go around again. And I'm going to take my next panel. And I'm going to adhere that. This one, just like the other one, is four inches high, four and a half inches wide. And I'm going to keep going around and I am going to build my tower. And I can fold this down and I can get out my ruler and it is four inches by nine inches and it fits perfectly into this envelope. So here's the trick. Look at your envelope, measure the height. You're gonna take off just a little bit of what the height of that envelope is. This was four and a quarter. So I said, okay, I want the height to be four. So I knew that everything that I was gonna cut needed to be four inches in height. Then I measured to see how wide the envelope is. It is nine and a half inches wide, nine and a quarter, excuse me. And I wanted to have it just a little bit less. So I knew that when my final card was done, it needed to be nine inches wide. Well, for nine inches in width, that means that each panel is going to be four and a half inches wide. I'm just going to take nine and divide it by two. And they're each going to be four inches high. So I'm going to have three panels that are going to be four inches high and four and a half inches wide. And then for that main panel that I'm going to use to make my tower, I know I need a panel that's four and a half inches wide. And then I can figure out how much I want to have in a side, how long I want each side to be for my tower. And I wanted each one to be one inch long. That means that I'm going to have four more inches. So in total, this needs to be eight and a half inches wide by four inches. So my message is you can make these any size you want, any, any size. And when you do that, just get out some white paper. This is very inexpensive cardstock. And I always do a prototype just to make sure that I know what I'm doing before I use a lot of either designer series paper or cardstock. And these were the two prototypes that I did for the two cards that I made. And this is the one, the J2, this is the large one. And that way you're always gonna have something that you can keep in your stash. You can write notes so you know what the height and the widths are. And then you can come back and refer to them however often that you want to do that. And then you can decorate these cards however you would like. You can make them simple. You can make them a little bit more um, flamboyant. Um, the one that I did for the slim line, I definitely put a little bit more in terms of design on it. And I just wanted to show you what I used for those. Just a couple of different things. I used the Shaded Summer stamp set. And that corresponds with the summer shadow dies that are in the celebration brochure. So I used some of those when I was making the different flowers. And then I also used some of the layering circles, the dies to cut out the sentiments. And I just thought this one was kind of fun. A lot of color 
but also a lot of different textures and different colors that we can use. So that's it. Kind of, I think, pretty straightforward. A lot of different options that you have. And I am going to stop the recording here, but I really hope that you got some ideas of what you might want to make with tower cards and give it a shot. It is really pretty straightforward and the options are endless.